So I understand the skepticism behind ultra lightweight gaming mice, especially when we're getting into that 40 to 50 gram range like we are today. Does reducing weight that far actually make a difference? Is there a point where maybe a gaming mouse can be too light? Well, after testing out the new Starlight 12 Phantom from Final Mouse and being able to finally buy one, testing it out for the past few days, uh, I am convinced that this is the direction that the gaming mouse industry needs to go in. And I mean, you know, this is the G Pro Superlight here, 60 to 62 gram. I never thought I'd be using a gaming mouse that would kind of make this feel not heavy, but like it actually has some decent weight to it. This mouse comes in at about 50 grams. So again, about 10 to 12 grams lighter than the G Pro Superlight and about 25 grams lighter than the Razer Viper Ultimate. There is a smaller model. Supposedly that one comes in closer to 45 grams, but even what Final Mouse are calling the medium here is pushing things a bit on the smaller end for my own hand size. So just keep that in mind. Despite it being cold medium, it is roughly the size of a Viper Mini. Playing first person shooters with a 50 gram wireless gaming mouse just feels unlike anything else that I've ever used. Since there's less momentum and inertia of the mouse due to the lower weight, I noticed that reactions and corrections in my aim specifically felt a little bit cleaner and more responsive. It's a hard thing to explain, but it feels like you're aiming a bit more naturally and less like you're interacting with a tool to perform that action for you. Hopefully that makes sense. In fact, it kind of reminds me of when I first tried the Logitech G Pro Superlight about a year ago. I was just blown away by how free my aim felt, didn't feel bogged down or like it was carried carrying any weight. So taking a further 10 to 15 grams off of the Superlight, it's kind of like experiencing that all over again. Now, this all begs the question, can you go to light? And honestly, after experiencing the Starlight 12, I don't really think so. Sure, you might find yourself a bit more jittery or unstable at first when trying a much lighter mouse, but that's probably just exposing something that you need to work on. That's where aim training can be super helpful to help train that smoothness and get used to that lower weight. Now, the way that Final Mouse were able to make the Starlight 12 so light in the first place was actually by making it out of metal. So yeah, this is a metal mouse, although it doesn't really feel metal if I'm gonna be completely honest. Uh, the complete outer shell is made out of magnesium, except for the bottom, which is plastic. So try not to flex that part. But making it out of magnesium, which is the lightest structural metal, it definitely shows. This thing is really, really strong while being really light at the same time. Honestly, there is zero flex or creaking here. If you are someone who does like death grip your mouse, uh, you won't have a problem with build quality or anything like that, which is really not something that you see from gaming mice. Once you get around that 50 gram mark. Taking a peek on the inside, we can see quite a bit of reinforcing just to eliminate any flex of that outer shell. And we can also see that the battery is positioned really far back. That's to help offset the weight of the PCB and keep the balance of the mouse as centered as possible. And yeah, that's pretty much the end result. Something else that Final Mouse have really dialed in here is the feel and tensioning of the clicks. So the main clicks, they feel really light and crispy, basically no pre-travel or wobble at all. And these are using force bin KLGM 8.0 switches. All of the other buttons feel pretty great too, not a whole lot to say here if I'm honest, but here is a quick sound test. Something that Final Mouse do need to work on though is the input lag for those main clicks. Uh, as we can see here, we're about six milliseconds slower than what Logitech are currently achieving for their fastest gaming mice, which also use mechanical switches. So hopefully Final Mouse can deploy an optional firmware update to reduce the debounce of those main clicks or maybe make it adjustable because for a top tier gaming mouse, I did expect it to be towards the top. So six milliseconds slower than the G Pro Superlight. As much as I wanna sit here and tell you that is a meaningful difference and that's going to make a huge impact on your gameplay. The truth is it just will not, especially for most of us who are not competing on LAN and we're playing online shooters. You already have so many variables there like ping, tick rate, and the input lag of your entire system. Still though, I do think Final Mouse can do a little bit better here, maybe implementing like a zero or one millisecond debounce. Uh, that would probably get them pretty close to Logitech levels and I really would like to see them do that. Now in terms of the shape, uh, basically if you took 
took the Viper Mini, made it a little bit longer and also smoothed out the hump at the back to make it a little bit flatter. That's basically the size and shape that we're working with. That means that compared to the G Pro Superlight and the Viper Ultimate, it is a noticeably smaller mouse. That could be good or bad depending on what you're after. I have medium to large sized hands and typically use a claw grip, but I really had to claw grip this thing aggressively to get a proper and secure hold. Uh, it was definitely an uncomfortable experience for the first couple of days, but now it is feeling a little bit more usable. So if anything, this is just a reminder that the overall shape and feel of the mouse is way more important to you than anything. Of course, lightweight specs are the primary talking point here, but that honestly means nothing if you can't hold the mouse properly. So I'm about three days in with the Starlight 4 Phantom here, definitely getting a bit more used to it. And again, it brings back memories of when I first tried the G Pro Super Light. Despite the shape of that mouse not being anything impressive, I basically forced myself to use it until it felt comfortable simply because the specs were so good and I knew the potential was there. The Starlight 12 Phantom has me feeling kind of the same way. Having said all this, there are some things here that I'm not a fan of. Firstly, the honeycomb sides. I definitely would have preferred these to be solid. I feel like my grip would be a little bit more comfortable that way. I might experiment with some grip tape down the road, but we'll see how we go. Uh, next is the engraving on the main buttons. You do get used to it, but sometimes it does feel a little bit weird. So probably would have preferred these to be smooth. Lastly, and most importantly, is the way that Final Mouse do business uh, with their hyped up drops that sell out in just a couple of minutes. Uh, the one that I have here is one of 25,000. So it's good to see that they are at least becoming a bit more accessible. And I really hope they continue to do more drops in the future because what they have created here is a really good product and it is a unique aiming experience. If you really wanna get your hands on a Starlight 12, um, I'm not here to really say whether it is worth it for you or not. I'm telling you it is a really good mouse and it is unlike anything else that I've used, but I would not pay scalper prices for it. I mean, 400 to $500 on eBay, uh, I'm not sure any mouse is worth that much unless you're like a really competitive gamer. So ideally, I would just wait for Final Mouse to do another Starlight 12 drop, follow them on Twitter and make sure you have the date dialed in. Hopefully you can actually get your hands on one. But in terms of like what gaming mouse I would recommend instead of the Starlight 12, I think the closest that you can get in terms of like size, shape and overall feel would be this one right here. This is the Ponage Ultra Custom Sim 2. So as you can see, it's a very similar mouse here in terms of the overall shape and size. The Sim 2 is actually based off of the Viper Mini. It is also wireless and has the same KLGM8 switches, although the Starlight 12 does feel a little bit nicer in that regard. Honestly, this is pretty much as close as you're going to get for overall feel, but at the same time, it is still a fair bit off. I mean, the Starlight 12 Medium is around 23 grams lighter than the Sim 2, and that does leave you with a different aiming experience. Having that completely wireless feel, but just at barely 50 grams, I really hope that more companies figure out how to do something similar because it really is something. But yeah, that pretty much sums up my overall thoughts on the Starlight 12 Phantom from Final Mouse. Really happy that I was able to finally purchase one and share my experience with you guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. Uh, it's looking like this or the new G303 is what I'll be using moving forward. Really want to get a lot more use out of the Starlight 12, but I do have to grip it quite aggressively, but we'll see what happens in the future. Otherwise, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.